Hey guys, welcome back to Mechanical PE Exam Prep. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to get the basics down before solving lots of problems, take my Udemy course, HVAC and Refrigeration Fundamentals. In less than five hours, you'll review all the major topics you need for the PE exam. By the end, you'll actually be excited to start studying. 101 Solved Mechanical Engineering Problems, HVAC number six. At a particular location, there are 220 days in the heating season, and the number of degree days is 4,839. The design heating load for a building was originally calculated as 135,000 BTUs per hour based on a 70 degree interior design temperature and a zero degree exterior design temperature. Over the years, the building occupants have tampered with the heating controls, and the building owner has determined that the interior temperature has been maintained at 73 degrees for several years. A, what is the current heat loss over the heating season? And B, what savings in BTUs per year can the building owner expect if the interior temperature is reduced to 68 degrees? So let's start with a reminder of what heating degree days are. Heating degree days is an attempt to quantify the amount of energy needed to heat a building. So how does that work? To actually calculate that, what they do is for each day, they take the difference between a base temperature and the average temperature outside. So the base temperature is always taken as 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is kind of arbitrary. They could have selected anything, but it's a reasonable temperature to use because most buildings have some internal load. So you could assume that you're going to pick up a few degrees inside the building just by virtue of there being equipment or people or appliances or what have you. So you might want to size your heating system to be able to get the temperature to 65, even though from a control perspective, you're ultimately going to run it to something a little higher, maybe 68 or 70 or 72, depending on the specific situation of your building. So anytime we're talking about heating degree days or cooling degree days, we're always going to come back to this base temperature of 65 degrees as the reference. And then for each day, you subtract the outside air temperature, and that's how many heating degree days for that day. For example, where I am today, the average temperature outside is about 40 degrees. So comparing that to the base temperature of 65, there's going to be 25 heating degree days today. Tomorrow, it's going to be quite a bit warmer, maybe about 60 degrees. So there'll only be five heating degree days. So it's the product of the number of degrees of delta T on average for that day times one day. And then if the following day it ends up being 65 degrees or warmer, then there'll be zero heating degree days for that day. There might even be cooling degree days if it swings in the other direction. So if you do that for an, an entire season and add it all together, you can get a total number of heating degree days for that area. And if you track that year over year, you start to get a sense of how much heating is required and you can look at the worst case or you can look at the average case and figure out how much energy it's gonna to take to heat the building and how much it's going to cost. So just for a few examples, if you run this analysis for an area like Miami, you'll find that about 500 heating degree days per year, which is pretty low since it's Florida and it's warm. Where I live, which is near New York City, there are 10 times as many heating degree days per year, about 5,000. And in parts of Alaska, there's four times that, 20,000 heating degree days per year. Many, many days in a row of huge delta Ts and a very long heating season, probably 12 months a year. So that's just to give you a sense and a bit of a reminder. But coming back to this specific problem, we've been told that there are 4,839 heating degree days and that the heating season is 220 days long. So we can figure out the average delta T. All we have to do is take the 4839 heating degree days and the units are degrees times days and divide by the number of days, which is 220. And days cancels out and we get 22 degrees. That's the average delta T throughout the heating season. Now, when we say average delta T, we have to remember that that is referencing the base temperature of 65 degrees and has nothing to do with how the building is actually operated. This is just based on temperature data that's been collected for that area. It's irrelevant to the building design at this point. So we can say T base minus the average outside temperature, which I'll call T sub O, and I'll use this bar to represent average, equals 22 degrees. And 
we know the base temperature is 65, so we can rearrange this to solve for that average outside temperature. It's going to be 65 minus 22 equals 43 degrees. So the average outside temperature during the heating season for this area is 43 degrees. And now we're ready to take into consideration the specific attributes of this building, which was designed for a worst case scenario heat loss of 135,000 BTUs per hour when the delta T is 70, indoor design temperature of 70 degrees and an exterior design temperature of zero degrees. So let's figure out how much heat loss per degree based on those design conditions. We'll do Q dot design divided by the design delta T. So that's 135,000 BTUs per hour divided by 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And we get 1,929 BTU per hour per degree Fahrenheit. So for every additional degree Fahrenheit in the delta T, it's going to take an extra 1,900 BTUs per hour to make up for that heat loss. So if we want to calculate the total heat loss, as they're asking us to in part A, we want an answer that's just BTUs, right? We want to know the total amount of energy. So we can use this number, which is energy per unit time and per degree F, and just multiply by the delta T and the amount of time in the heating season, and we should get the total heat loss. So let's do that. So the total heat loss is going to be 1929 BTU per hour per degree Fahrenheit times the actual delta T. And now this is going to be based on the actual operational conditions. So unlike when we're talking about heating degree days and we use this base temperature, now we want to use the temperature of how they're really controlling the building. The occupants have tampered with the heating controls, so they're actually running it at 73 degrees. That's the number we want to use for the inside temperature. And the average outside temperature is 43 degrees. So now our delta T is not 22, it's actually 30. That's a pretty significant difference. So that's going to get rid of degrees F, and now we want to multiply by the amount of time in the heating season, which is 220 days, and we can change that into hours, 24 hours per day. And days will go away, and hours will cancel, and we'll just be left with BTUs. And that comes out to 3.05 times 10 to the eighth BTUs, so 305 million BTUs is the total heat loss for the whole season. And that's answer A. Now for part B, they want us to find the savings that the building owner can expect if the interior temperature is reduced to 68. So what would change if we were to reduce that interior temperature? It's really the same calculation, except that instead of the interior temperature being 73, it's gonna be 68. So the delta T, rather than being 30, is actually gonna be only 25 and we could calculate the total amount of energy using a delta T of 25 and then subtract from answer A and we would have the difference. Or if we want to go directly after the savings, we can run this same calculation with a delta T of 5 and it'll work out just the same. So let's do that, it's a little more direct. So it's still 1929 BTU per hour per degree F, but now the delta T is going to be 5, so we'll say 73 degrees minus 68 degrees. This is just the savings. And the time is the same. It's still 220 days and still 24 hours per day. And that works out to 5.1 times 10 to the seventh BTUs. And that's answer B. And you'll notice that that number is one-sixth of answer A, which makes sense because the delta T was reduced from 30 to 25. So the big takeaway here is the amount of energy is linearly related to the delta T. So if we reduce the delta T by one sixth, we're going to save one sixth of the energy. And as an operator, you can imagine turning these BTUs into dollars, and it becomes pretty appealing to gain that operational efficiency and save on the heating cost.